إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار أما بعد All praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him and we seek His help and aid and we ask Allah to protect us and to forgive us our sins We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and to forgive us our sins and to protect us from the evils of ourselves and from the sins that we commit Indeed, whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide and whoever he causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. And verily, the best of speech, the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated. And every religious innovation is a bid'ah. And every bid'ah is a misguidance. And every misguidance will be in the fire of hell. My brothers and my sisters, inshallah today my khutbah is on the topic, Islam, the solution to racism. Over 1400 years ago, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had not only preached, had not only preached the ideals of freedom, equality, and fraternity, but had actually established these principles. Islam not only recognizes different people and languages, Islam not only recognizes different ethnicity and different background but declares that all people regardless of color regardless of origin regardless of ethnic background regardless of belief gender they all belong to one family they are all children of their first parents Adam and Hawa alayhim as-salatu was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honors the children of Adam alayhi salam by saying, وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي Adam," And indeed, we have honored the children of Adam. My brothers and my sisters, alhamdulillah, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding us to this great religion of ours, al-Islam. It guides us to the best of both worlds, the dunya as well as the akhirah and only in this religion of Islam this worldly life and the hereafter we can find happiness the goodness of both of these worlds are found in the Quran and in the authentic sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran Inna hadha al-Qur'ana yahdi lillati hiya aqwam That verily this Qur'an guides to that which is most upright And our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Was sent to rectify both of these worlds The abode of the dunya As well as the abode of the hereafter The akhirah so he ordered us, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered us with ibadah, with worship, 
with Tawheed, with Salah, with Zakah, with fasting, with Hajj. At the same time, he not only ordered us with ibadah, he ordered us with mu'amalat, our relationship with each other. How do we relate with each other? It was thought, it was Islam that taught us all of these things. It was Islam that taught us the rights of women, as well as how we, we should treat each other and the rest of mankind. It was Islam that taught us the rights of the orphans and the poor. It was Islam that taught us. It was Islam that taught us how we can able to live and protect each other. Islam came and protect the wealth of the people by forbidding stealing, by forbidding looting, as well as gambling and riba. Islam came and protect the honor of the people by prohibiting lies, by prohibiting slandering and backbiting. Islam came and restored the family ties and protecting the ties of kinship. Islam came and protect the rights of everybody and protect the rights of everyone by prohibiting oppression and violence and killing senseless acts of violence only fuel the fire of hate, hate and hatred and bigotry and racial discrimination. Unjust killing must be condemned regardless of who the perpetrator is. Islam teaches us that the killing of any human being without justice or due process of law is a grave sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran, Man qatala nafsan bighayri nafs, that whoever killed a human being except as a punishment for murder, or fasad in fil ard, or for spreading corruption in the land, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا shall be regarded as having killed all of mankind. وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا And whoever saved a human being, whoever saved a human life, shall be regarded as having saved all of mankind. My brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also told us in the Qur'an, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا النَّفْسَ الَّتِي حَرَّمَ اللَّهُ إِلَّا بِالْحَقِّ That do not take life, which Allah has made sacred, except in a just cause. My brothers, my brothers and my sisters, Islam prohibits racism in all forms. Islam has described racism in the worst terms. What is racism? It is the belief that some races of people are better than others. It is also the poor treatment or violence against people because of their race. It also means the prejudice, discrimination, or rivalry directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. Islam has made racism from the worst types of sins Islam has always been at the forefront in condemning and uprooting racism from the society. Our religion teaches us that the very first racist was Iblis, alayhi la'natullah. The very first racist was Iblis, alayhi la'natullah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered him to prostrate in front of Adam alayhi salam. What was his argument? It was a racist argument. He said, Ana khayrum minhu, that I am better than him. Iblis, what makes you better than him? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala questioned him. He said, Khalaqtani min nar, wa khalaqtahu min teen that you created me from the fire 
And this human being, you created him from clay. So my race and my creation is better than his race and his creation. So this is what Islam teaches us, that the very first racist was shaitan, was iblis, alayhi larnatullah. Islam promotes absolute equality and brotherhood among human beings. This is articulated in a very profound verse in Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, Allah is speaking to everyone, not only Muslims, O mankind. Inna khalaqanakum min dhakarin wa untha. That we, verily, we have created all of you from a single male and female. Adam and Hawa alayhim as salam. Waja'alnakum shu'uba wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu. And then we have made you into nations and tribes. Why? Not that you will be in order for you to belittle each other, not that you will insult and ridicule each other, no, but rather that you may know each other, that you may learn from each other, that you may learn from each other's culture. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum, that the most noble among you in the sight of Allah are the ones most mindful of him, most God-fearing, most pious, and the one who possess most taqwa. Inna Allah alimun khabir, that Allah is all-knowing and all-aware. So my brothers and my sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah strongly condemns and forbids racism. How? By formally laying down the criteria of measurement, the criteria or the yardstick in measuring superiority of one person over another. It is not by the color of one's skin, not by lineage, not by ethnicity, not by language, not by economic status, but only by taqwa, consciousness of Allah. According to your iman, your level of your iman and your ibadah, if you have a more stronger iman and you're closer to Allah, you're better in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also tells us in another verse in Surah al -Rum, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ خَلْقُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ That among his signs is the creation of the heavens and the earth. وَاخْتِلَافُ أَلْسِنَتِكُمْ وَأَلْوَانِكُمْ And the difference of your languages and your colors. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لِلْعَالِمِينَ That verily in that are signs for those who have knowledge. So my brothers and my sisters, the Prophet ﷺ in his statements and in his actions forbade racism in the strongest of terms. The Prophet ﷺ told us in his farewell sermon in Hajjatul Wida, he said, Ayyuhal Nas, notice he didn't say Ayyuhal Muslimun. <coughs> He say, O oh people, O oh mankind. Why? Because he is addressing all of mankind. And also because he knew his words will convey to all of mankind. He said, Ayyuhan nas, ala inna rabbakum wahid. That, O oh mankind, verily your Lord is one. Wa inna abakum wahid. And your father is one. Adam alayhi salam. Ala la fadla li arabiyin ala a'jami. That certainly an Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab. Wa la a'jamiyin ala arabi. 
nor does a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. Nor does a white person has any superiority over a black person. Nor does a black person has any superiority over a white person. And he said, except by one thing, and that is taqwa, piety, God consciousness, being close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also forbade racism not only by speech but also by his actions. He set the precedence 1400 years ago. For example, the Arabs of Jahiliya before Islam, they used to only marry from within their tribe and within their families. <clears throat> Why? Because they feel that other tribes and other families are lower than them. But the Prophet ﷺ, what he did? He married Fatima bint Qais radiallahu anha to Usama ibn Zaid. Who was Usama ibn Zaid radiallahu anhuma? He was a freed slave. He was of low lineage, was unknown his tribe. And who was Fatima bin Tuqais? She was from Qurashi al Arabi. She was from the Arab and she was from the highest tribe at that time in the Quraysh. And the Prophet ﷺ married. He set the precedence among the people. <clears throat> in fact, his cousin Zainab bin Tujash, radiallahu anha, who was from a Qurashi al Arabi, who was from also Quraysh and also an Arab, he married her. He married her, her to Zaid ibn Harith, radiallahu an. He was a freed slave and, and from an unknown tribe as well. So look how the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, not only spoke out against racism, but he demonstrated practically ways to root it out from the society by encouraging and promoting intermarriages among his companions. My brothers and my sisters, racism is very dangerous and we as Muslims can subconsciously fall into this sin. As Muslims living here in the West, not only do many of us fall prey to the dominant views of the society around us, but many of us also we carry our own baggage of cultural racism and bigotry that often stem from prejudice imported from our own countries. We must understand that these cultural prejudices have no place in Islam and need to be eradicated. Immigrants and their children must take it upon themselves to examine their hearts and eliminate any racist belief that they may harbor. As Muslims, we have to be careful not only to align ourselves with people for, from our countries and people from our cultures and who speak our own languages. By marrying our sons and daughters to people only from our culture and our countries, and our race and refusing marriage proposals from other races and cultures. Because we need to understand, we have to be very, very careful of the plots of shaitan. Because shaitan is quick to divide us and make us feel that we are better than others. Because we are from a better country, or because we are here longer than others. Let us remember the same shaitan was a racist towards our own father, Adam salam, thinking that he was better than him, 
And the same way shaitan wants to sow the seed of racism into our hearts, thinking that we are better than others. My brothers and my sisters, and this even occurred during the time of the Prophet wasallam among his companions, radiallahu anhum. Although they were so high in their level of their iman, but the Prophet wasallam dealt with it formally and was quick to eradicate it from the society. <clears throat> One day, Abu Dhar al-Ghaffari, radiallahu anhu, he called Bilal, Yabna Sauda. He said, O oh, son of a black woman. He called him the son of a black woman. <clears throat> the Prophet ﷺ was furious. He was angry when he heard about it. And he said, That are you belittling him through his mother? The fact that she was a black woman? and you're using color and his mother to belittle him? The Prophet Sallallahu told him, you still have traces of jahiliyyah in you. And so, my brothers and my sisters, <clears throat> Abu Dhar radiallahu an, he apologized and he regretted. And he, one narration said that he even placed his cheek on the earth and he told Bilal to step on him. On him. And Bilal said, no, the head that, that bows to Allah, no feet could touch it. And Bilal kissed his cheek, and the two of them cried in one narration. So we can see that the Prophet wasallam dealt with it formally and directly, and he didn't ignore the issue. Also, one day the Prophet wasallam he heard the Ansars addressing each other by Ya Lil Ansar. Oh, for the Ansar. And Ya Lil Muhajirin. He heard the Muhajirun, they were addressing each other, Ya Lil Muhajirin. And the Prophet wasallam stopped them. And he said, what is, this, what is this call that you're calling of Jahiliyyah? He said, Da'awha fa innaha khabitha, that leave this call, for verily it is a call of jahiliyyah. Jahiliyyah means the pre Islamic era, before the advent of Islam. And in many a hadith, the Prophet said, Inna Allah qad adhaba ankum ubiyat al jahiliyyah that verily Allah has removed from you this bigotry of jahiliyyah. Mu'minun taqi aw fajirun shaqi. That's it. He said, every single human being, either you're a Muslim, you're a mu'min, you believe in Allah, or you're a disbeliever. That only whether you have iman and are from the people of happiness, or you're a disbeliever and the people of wretchedness. He also said, Antum min bani Adam, that all of you are from the children of Adam. But Adam min Torab, and Adam was from clay. So what gives you the right to think that you're better than another human being, regardless of what race they are from? And the Prophet وسلم, also said, Laysa minna man da'a ila asabiyya, that the one who calls to tribalism or nationalism is not from among us. Laysa minna man qatala ala asabiyya, that the one who fights for a tribal bigotry or nationalism is not from among us. Laysa minna Man mata ala asabiyya. And the one who, f who dies fighting for tribalism is not from among us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us so that we could be able to understand our religion and able to practice it. Aqulu kawli hadha wa astaghfiru Allah li wa lakum wa li sayu al-muslimina min kulli dhambin fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur rahim
Alhamdulillahi hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli amma ba'd My brothers and sisters the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also exhorted us in a beautiful hadith he said arba'un min ummati min amril jahiliya la yatrukuna hunna that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said four traits from jahiliya from the kufur of jahiliya will remain in some of my ummah that they will not leave it and the first two he mentioned al fakhru fil ahsab wa ta'nu fil ansab that boasting over your forefathers and your lineage and your ancestry boasting about that and insulting other people's lineage and ancestry and, 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 and forefathers. And in the hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also said, Fintani fin nasi huma bihima kufur, that two things lead to kufur, force of them, a turn of ansab, insulting people's lineage, people's ethnicity, people's forefathers and ancestors. And he called it kufur. And he also said the second, وَنِيَاحَةُ عَلَى الْمَيِّتِ Wailing over the dead and complaining, complaining against the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So from all of these, we can see how strong the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his speech and in his actions to forbid and to root out racism from the society. My brothers and my sisters, it is very, very important that the challenge that lies ahead is tearing down the wall of discrimination that separates and divides us. Muslims of all races and colors should be completely integrated to exhibit the true color of Islamic brotherhood. Despite the prejudice, the bigotry or discrimination that existed for centuries in Arabia before Islam. Islam brought Muslims together as one community. Whether it was Suhail Arumi, whether it was Bilal al-Habashi, whether it was Salman al-Farsi, they were all considered equal before the law under Islam and they became real brothers in faith. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have mercy on us and on the people of our age. May he grant us the tawfiq to truly work toward eliminating racial discrimination, bigotry, and hypocrisy. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength and the courage to bear the trials and suffering of this world with patience and perseverance to forgive us our shortcomings not to place on us a burden greater than we can bear rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an-nar allahumma inna nas'aluka al-jannata wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa 'amal wa na'udhu bika min an-nar wa ma qarraba ilayha min qawlin wa 'amal wa nas'aluka al-khayr ما سعى لك عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ونعوذ بك من الشر ما استعاذك منه عبدك محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن إبادتك اللهم احفظنا بالإسلام قياما واحفظنا بالإسلام قعودا واحفظنا بالإسلام ركودا اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقرب إلى حبك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت ولي في الدنيا والآخرة توفنا مسلمين والحكنا بالصالحين يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تقلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين
wa iqa wa qimus sholah 